the world faces many challenges in this day and age. And one of them is that art and science often live in silos. I remember when I was doing my PhD in neuroscience, I showed an art piece that I had created from lab materials to one of my colleagues. And he looked at me and he said, why would you do that? <laughs> and, and, and so I tried to explain to him the artistic reflection of the scientific process and cross-pollination of ideas. And he looked for a moment and said, I've got work to do and walked away. And so I really hope that I'm going to do a better job making my case to y'all today. Why does the siloing of art and science matter? Because like colors, ideas and information multiplies. If you have two colors and you keep them siloed, then you just have two colors, red and yellow. But if you mix them, suddenly you have the beautiful palette of a rising sun. And similarly, if we take a transdisciplinary approach to art and science, we can multiply the information and ideas and perhaps make the world a slightly better place. I'm going to talk about some examples from my work that use technology to mediate deep synergy between art and science. With my collaborators, I created an interactive installation called Livestream to raise public discourse around groundwater. As I'm sure many Californians already know, groundwater is one of our most precious resources, and yet it's easy to forget about as it constantly runs beneath our feet. Our dream was to create an interactive installation that would read data from sensors across the state of Kentucky and turn that data into musical notes that would play as a symphony in a public park. And to give the viewers empowerment, to give them agency to conduct that symphony, and to listen to the groundwater data. We used proximity sensors. So as you approach a pipe, the melody would crescendo and then fade again as you walk away. We had lots of challenges to create uh, an interactive installation combined with technology. And so we really wanted to, um, <laughs> to have youngsters like this um, exploring groundwater data. And, you know, maybe they could go on and become scientists someday, um, studying groundwater in their own community. By taking data from scientific sensors and, uh, and relaying them to the public in a playful way, we start to break down the silos separating art and science and democratize the science. And there are still many challenges to this work, including maintenance and funding and interagency coordination, but I hope this seed is something you take away as the possibility for greater collaboration between art and science. To further this idea and really think about how we could create uh, a pure merger of the artistic and scientific process, I started to think about how we could not only take new ideas, but actually create new data. Start with scientific hypotheses and phenomena and create an art installation that would generate novel data sets to test those hypotheses. That's what I did with my collaborators at Lovid when we created Telephone Rewired. This work is based on neuroscience research, and in a moment I'm going to give you a brief demo. However, this involves flashing the screen. And so if anybody here is sensitive to strobe lights or has photosensitive epilepsy, you may wish to cover your eyes or step out during this brief demonstration. Neuroscience research has shown that pulses of light and sound can actually entrain the endogenous rhythms of the brain. And in so doing, can change your perceptions, your reaction times, your memory formation. And so we wanted to create an art installation that would use this phenomenon and create a reflective space that allowed the viewer to consider the potential for neurofeedback and collaborative cognition. And now for the demo. Prepare to enter the matrix. So what you're seeing here is simply flashing the screen black and white at the theta rhythm, which is a frequency used by the brain. And if you let go, your brain will actually synchronize with the screen. The installation would take you on a journey through different frequencies. But even in this simple demonstration, any colors or shapes or patterns you may see is just your mind shifting into a different mode of operation. 
And so we've shown this work at museums and galleries around the world, and we ask viewers to wear an EEG headband to record their brainwaves. We also asked some participants to take a memory test while we modulated their brainwaves. And so far, we've collected data from thousands of viewers, including EEG data as well as participant responses, with the goal of ultimately feeding back and further progressing the science itself. This work has many challenges. Um, we didn't have to worry about rainy weather, fortunately, but we did learn, for example, to boldly label your USB data sticks so data doesn't get lost when the installation gets taken down and shipped back. If anybody here today happens to find a USB stick when you're wandering around in a museum and it has a few thousand participant responses, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. As an art installation, we wanted to create an aesthetic experience, a place where you could think about a future world in which we can manually toggle the switches of human cognition. This is one viewer's reaction to the work. It was definitely very intense. My moods and kind of like you know, how I felt emotionally was honestly like pretty strong and drastic. At a few points, I kind of felt like I was panicking, and at other points, I felt like surprisingly confident, all like, you know, very psychedelic, you know, it's just like a lot of forms and, you know, shapes and colors and motions. With the lower frequencies, I tended to see pale blue dots a lot. That kind of reminded me of like, you know, some butterfly wings I've seen. It was definitely ther very therapeutic, similar to how, like, say, if you gave your muscles a vigorous massage, my own state of being felt massage, where it's just sort of like I felt very thoroughly worked, but more capable for it. It didn't just, you know, make me feel good or more connected, but it raised more questions that I want to look into. And so for all my yammering on today, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to describe it any better than that. So Telephone Rewired is attempting to break down the silos between art and science and fully meld the artistic and scientific process to start with a f scientific phenomenon and hypotheses and create an immersive aesthetic experience that can generate the data sets to test those hypotheses. And so, where do we go from here? There are seven million science researchers in the world, and about two million artists in the United States alone. That sounds to me like a lot of potential to create new ideas, generate novel data sets, and to create public discourse around some of the most pressing challenges of our time, from climate change to cognitive decline and dementia. But in order to achieve that potential, we need the participation of everyone here. So if you're an artist, reach out to a science lab near you. Ask them about bringing their work to a new audience. If you're a scientist, reach out to the art department in your university and take seriously their feedback about new perspectives. If you're in technology, make collaboration tools so we can more easily share data sets and algorithms and visualizations. And if you're in grant budgeting, consider making it a requirement to have communication and artistic collaboration in scientific research, so that we're sure that we're seeing all our scientific research from different perspectives and um, encouraging further public discourse. To leave you with some perspective, about 2.8 million people visited the Museum of Modern Art last year, and about 13 million people visited Golden Gate Park. For the scientists in the room, how many people read your last paper? For the non-scientists in the room, imagine a world in which 15 million more people had a personally moving experience thinking about the future of our planet. And so, let's create a movement of synergy between art and science that could potentially fuel the future of scientists and artists, change the way people value funding the arts and scientific research, tip the scales of scientific literacy, and maybe, just maybe, make the world a better place, and save the world from cognitive decline and abuse of our most precious resources. Thank you very much, and I look forward to synergizing with you in the future.